enjoy that. I think that's, that's some, for some of you, that, that may be a new experience of performing song chant. And when you've got new students, this is a very good way to start them out. Because, uh, it's easy to be tense, but it's, it's hard for some people <coughs> just to be nice and relaxed. And just be able to go through the movements without trying to tense up. And tensing up is something that uh, you know, an unnaturally tense kind of a kata is very hard to uh, change as you get more advanced. Uh, breathing. You know, we have, we have drills for doing the circle block, we have drills for punching, we have drills for kicking, but you know, we don't have a drill for breathing. And that was something that I felt was very important for our style because I saw, you know, as I visit hundreds of dojos, that this is the one area where people perform kata and there is no knowledge whatsoever of breathing. Some people will be able to hold their breath throughout the whole kata. You know? <laughs> and at one of the don tests, one of my students went up and there, we had about, that's back when we had the big boards, test boards, and we had like 20 people on the board. And this guy got up there and he was so scared, nervous. I mean, he could tell. He was just shaking like a leaf. And he went through his kata and without breathing at all. Like that. And he made a turn and just dropped. <laughs> and afterwards, and I kid him to this day, he's still very active. And he swore he was breathing. He said, I don't know what happened. <laughs> but the thing is, after a while, you, you don't realize that you're not breathing. So if, if we spend so much time working on things like punches and kicks, why don't we spend a little time on trying to understand how to breathe as you're going through your kata? And I came up with a, a, a way that I've been doing for many, many years, and it, it works for my students, and it's something, again, not something that I'm saying you have to do, you know, but you've got to have some, some way of addressing that. When you become tense, and students will do that, normally they, they don't have a method of breathing. They just hold their breath, and then every once in a while they'll gasp for air. Obviously, there's something wrong with that, that scenario. So what I do is break it down into three parts. So <clears throat> from here, I bring my arm back and just... <clears throat> see, and this was Weiji's attempt. He, he made a noise, but his breathing was so soft, we, we didn't understand it. So we just thought they were making a noise. But in fact, that there was an exhalation of sorts. All right? But we don't link it to the movement. See, if you do this, like that, then you're linking it to that movement. And, and that, I'm exaggerating there, but if, if, if you hear people breathe that way, now yeah, there is a, a, uh, a connection. But it's not a good one. It's not one that Weiji ever had. He wanted to separate the breathing from the actual movement. So what I did is I bring the arm back, and you hesitate a second, and you breathe. Out and back. That's one count. And then step. And that's one count. And at each count, you take that breath. So it looks like this. All right. You notice it follows the movement. Now, why do you do that? Well, if you're in a fight, how, how many fights are consist of all punches and kicks so that you can breathe, following, or while you're, you're punching? A lot of fights, you're standing there talking, or yelling at one another, or just waiting for something to happen. And that's where the problem comes in. People associate the breathing with the movement, and then the only time they're going to breathe is if there is an opportunity to do that movement. And it's easy to key eye when you're punching, so you're, that's a way of breathing. But it's not what Weiji had in mind. The breathing is separate. So if you're standing there, you're still breathing. And it's like you set up a tempo. And you can breathe through your nose or mouth breathe. So now if you're, if, if you're just standing there and you're arguing or whatever, you're still breathing. All right? When you get under stress, all of a sudden that breathing kicks in. First thing that happens when you're under stress should be shoulders down and then start that breathing. Instead of just standing there being tense. Does that make any sense? All right. So just standing there, make the sound. Put your hand below the navel and either through your nose or through your mouth. You 
You notice as I'm exhaling, the stomach goes up. That's what, what they call it, kind of a reverse breathing, because you're pushing down. And when you exhale, inhale takes place naturally. A boxer friend of mine, we were talking about it, and he said, well, you know, my feeling is all you have to concentrate on is exhaling, because the inhaling will take place naturally. And, and that's really what Weiji breathing is all about. You exhale, and you, you create kind of a void here, and then the inhale comes naturally. So you focus on exhale, and the inhale follows naturally. Well, try a few more. call it soft sanchen. Or you're, you're, you're just working on your breathing and this and think of it just as a drill, like you're doing punches or kicks or blocks or whatever. Okay? With me, right Sanchen? Listen. And uh, start breathing now. something, they'll make the change in the kata. And over a period of time, the kata changes a great deal. And that's a little bit of a danger, where the kata start, loses resemblance to uh, the wage system. And there are people, you know, good friends of mine, who, uh, you know, oh, wow, you know, I'm doing this and that, I, you know, all these things here, uh, you know, now, now my kata is really practical for me. And of course, when you're a fifth, sixth, seventh don, that's true. I mean, you sort of personalize the kata for you. But if you're a teacher, you have to be careful that you don't, you know, every time you discover something, that you introduce it in your class. Uh, one of my uh, early, early students, a fellow by the name of John Patelli, he was an MIT professor at like 16, and he was a re real genius kind of guy. And he loved <coughs> the art. He, you know, he, he listened to me talk about how everything comes from San Shen. So his goal in life was to change movements in Sanshin as he discovered them. And pretty soon Sanshin looked like Seisan. Right? So the point being that you always want to keep your Sanshin looking like Sanshin. And Seisan always like Seisan. It doesn't mean that you can't have a little different understanding of it. But try not to change the system. Give your students the same opportunity you have. And the reason you're here is perhaps just to learn a few more things and reasons why you should keep the content the same. And some of the things that maybe you should focus on so that when they get to brown belt level and they start to spar, that the sparring will have some resemblance to Weiji other than Taekwondo or rather than Taekwondo or techniques that are flashy but have no, you know, no meaning to our style. <coughs> 